Okay, hello guys. So I'm Anjali and welcome to our first lesson in histopathology. So, simulan natin. So, congratulations for passing histology class. So, isn't it that in your histology, guys, you learn about normal tissue structure, the diba? tissue function. So, lahat ng mga normal na pag-aralan nyo about tissues, about cells, about epithelial cells, connective tissue, um, dense connective tissue, and so on sa histology. Now, class, we are in histopathology section. Yan, histopathology section. So, the knowledge of normal tissue structure is very important. Kasi class, pag may sakit, if there is a pathology, if there is a disease class, there is expect a change in the structure of your tissues in your cells. So, pag nagkakaroon ng sakit class, nagbabago ang itsura ng tissue ng cell, there could be increased tissue no, um, cell number. Marami yung cells mo. Yan. Causing swelling or tumor. Ganyan. Kunyari, example, may pimple ka. Yan. So, under the skin, kaya yung may pus dyan, may puti. Pag nahinog na yung pimple mo, because there is accumulation of pus cells under your skin. So, there are changes, class, that happens when there is disease. And histopathology means the, the study of disease in tissues and the study of disease in tissue so that we could so class um I guess I go so there is changes in the tissues once there is disease and for us to see that class kailangan yung tissue is ma convert mo into slides kailangan mahati siya ng maninipis and to be converted into slides so class um Ang isa sa maninding pag-aaralan ng dito sa histopathology is how to process these tissues, these samples that we are getting. Ma'am, from where? From surgery materials. Yeah. From surgery materials and biopsy materials. So, class, kung um, may nagpa-opera, mas lalo na dito sa Pilipinas, natanggal ang tonsils, natanggal ang appendix, class. Excuse me. They are bringing it in the histopathology section yeah, to see if there is changes in your appendix, in your tonsils. Yung ako class natanggal na yung right section of my thyroid class to see changes. Ganyan. So if there, if it's benign, kung walang cancer, malignant kung may cancer, kung may inflammation lang, ganyan. Yun, nalalaman natin nyo all lahat sa histopathology section. So class, ang special sa histopathology sections na hindi tulad ng hematology section, clinical chemistry section, parasitology section, clinical microscopy section class, lahat ng mga test na to could be routine test. But this, um, these tests are usually ordered by the physician. Dito sa histopathology section class, hopefully, hopefully, eh, isang basis lang kayo makakagamit ng histopathology section. Yan, kung nagpa-opera kayo o nagpa-biopsy kayo. Yan. So these are not routine tests. Yan. So it takes a long time for a in the histopathology section to release results. Yan. Kasi nga ito passes pa yung organ. Yan. Organ in such a way na makonvert siya into slides para makita ng pathologist, ng medical technologist yung um, results, yung changes sa tissue. So it could take a really long time. Depende sa protocol na uh, laboratory, sometimes about five days. Yan. So merong stat test naman sa histopathology section, yun, pag-aaralan natin. Anyway, welcome to our subject. Let's start. So introduction to our subject, histopathologic and cytologic techniques. Yan. So we will discuss the different terminologies. In this subject, what are the specimens involved? Yan. To give you an appreciation, guys, sa mga specimen na hindi basta-basta ang specimen sa histopathology section, the difference between fresh and preserved tissue examination. So you could um, examine a fresh tissue, so without fixative, and preserved tissue with fixative, which are fixed. 
and overview of tissue processing. So to give you an uh, overview, uh, a bird's eye view on what you're going to expect for the next coming days, advancement in histopathology and cytotechnology, and the opportunities on histopathology and cytotechnology. Science. Okay, pag-aralan natin yan today. So, let's start. So, class, um, the process under our histopathology section is histotechnology. Yan. So, histotechnology is the science centering on the microscopic detection, microscopic detection of tissue abnormalities for disease diagnosis and treatment of disease. Yeah. So class, ay, ayaw kong kalimutan yun na sa medical technology, sa trabaho natin, hindi lang tayo nagda-diagnose ng sakit ha. We are also promoting health yeah, and prevent disease. Yeah. So pwede sa histopathology or sa surgery per se, pwede na lang tanggalin ang isang organ, hindi dahil may cancer lang or kundi dahil namamaga, hindi ba, tama. So, to promote health and histotechnology is also important. So, hindi lang siya diagnosis of disease and treatment of disease, prevention of disease. Ayan. So, tanggalin mo na to prevent. So, class um, I don't know if what Angelina Jolie did is really correct, but it's her life. Hindi ba? Para hindi na daw, since she has breast cancer uh, genes, pinatanggal niya na yung breast at ovary niya agad-agad to promote health. Yan. I don't know if it's best, pero yun yung choice niya. So yun yung ginawa niya. Para hindi na siya magka-breast and cancer and ovarian cancer, pinatanggal niya na lang niya, di ba? So, and just... Um, so, histotechnology, we use technology, we use different machines, chemical reactions, reagents, we use dye, yeah, we use microscopes, different types of microscope to detect the tissue abnormalities for disease. Yeah. So, I mentioned that if there is disease, there are changes in your tissue, in your cells. So, para malaman yun, we process it through histotechnology. And the one who processes um, your tissues are your histotechnologists. So, ma'am, nagtik pa rin po ba ang histotechnologists? Yes, yeah. So, if you want to be specific, so, ang tawag sa mga nag-work sa under histopathology is our histotechnologists. In some laboratories, kung nasa histopathology ka, hindi ka na pupunta sa ibang section. That's what I know, ha? So, kung under histo pass ka lang. So, pwede kang tawagin medtech, pwede kang tawagin histo technologies. So, they are the one who prepares the specimen, surgical specimen from surgery, from biopsy, for microscopic screening. So, ang raming ginagawa ng histotechnologies. So, from a specimen na magiging ready to be seen under the microscope. Yan. And eventually, the, the prepared microscope, um, microscope, the prepared slide will be evaluated by a surgical pathologist or a anatomical pathologist. So, class sa histopathologist, ang talagang Ang um, jan tumatambay ang anatomic pathologist. Diyan tumatambay ang pathologist. Kasi kailangan talaga pathologist in the Philippines, pathologist ang nagre-read ng slides, hindi medtech. But in the US daw, pati medtech, kaya na nang mag-read ng slides. Or hinahayaan siya mag-read. Alam naman natin mag-read ng slides if we would be trained for that. But um, talagang Sa US daw, nagkaya ang mag-read at mag-describe ng slides ng mga histotechnologists. Yan. So class, other terms that you will hear is your diagnostic psychology. So we use cells to diagnose. We, we examine cells to diagnose disease. Yan. So where are these cells coming from? From the fluids in the body? So ang raming fluids. Peritoneal, plural, mong blood. Yeah. So, hindi. Sa hematology siya. Bone marrow. Yes. Bone marrow. Um, bone marrow sample. Yeah. Pwedeng psychology. Um, or it, it's still under histopathology section. Ha? So, the difference well, um, differences. So, pang, yung, kunyari, mag, may, nagpa-pop smear. So, 
a cervical vaginal smear that was placed on the slide. Yan. Na napatoyo. Yan. Idadala ng OBGYN sa laboratory or ng assistant sa laboratory. Tapos i-sustain natin. So class pop smear, ang tagong sa pop smear because we use pop stain yan, or papaniculaw stain. So so your pop smear is under exfoliative cytology wherein the cells that we utilize or the samples where we utilize were desquamated epithelial cells. So yung mga natanggal, turnover cells, you know, yung mga natanggal sa epithelial cells like for pop smear. So yan. So cytology usually says and from fluids. Okay. So class. So upon surgery, and so neck to, yan, thyroid surgery to. So it, ito na, wala, na tinanggal na itong thyroid. Yan. So class, feeling ko ganito yung thyroid ko, baka nung na-operahan ako. So sa, yan. Kung di ako nagkakamali, ito yung left side. So, yung left side, ay, the right side. So, ito yung right side. Ito yung left side. So, sa akin ang tanggal right side. So, ang laki. Yun nga, tinanggal siya kasi perhaps di, di so yung goiter. So, malaki na. So, sabi ng doktor, kailangan mo nang ipatanggal. So, yun, uh, lumaki yung, ano, yung one side of the Thyroid. So now, it will be brought to the histopathology section. Histopathology section. So in between this, yan, marami nangyayari for it to become like this. To turn it into slide. So imagine yung class, para ma- para uh, ma-focus ang, ang tissue section sa microscope, it should be about 5 micrometers thin. 5 micrometers thin. So, imagine nyo, ang red blood cell, 6 to 8 micrometers siya. 6 to 8 micrometers. So, 1, so, minus 1, so, 5 micrometers. Ganon, dapat kanipis ang paghati ng tissue slide para makita siya under the microscope. Para magmukha siyang ganito under the microscope. Ayan. So, class, from this to this, yan, yan ang role ng histo technologies. Yan. And last, there could, so, a lot of techniques are involved. A lot of factors, a lot of chemical reactions happen during this time. So, yun yung mga pag-aaralan natin. So, what are the skills and requirements to become a histo technologist? Yeah, number one, it requires patience. Uh, Plus, ang mga medtech, hindi mawawalan ng trabaho. Yan, hindi ever tayo mapapita ng makina. So, class, special, especially dito sa histopathology section. Do we use machine? It just hastens our work. However, class, kailangan the machines are well monitored by a medical technologist or a histotechnologist. So, it requires patient. So, it requires a lot of skill, class to be in the histopathology section. And hopefully, class, eh, gusto nyo yung histopathology section, though we are online. We would understand the tissue composition. So, class, so that you would know the correct fixative, the correct stain, that you're going to use the correct process, you have to know the tissue composition of the organ that you receive or the sample that you receive. Knowledge on chemical reactions, knowledge on biology, immunology, molecular biology, anatomy, and chemistry. So, hindi basta-basta maging histotechnologist. Exciting, exciting. So what are the specimens involved? So class, um, ito, meron dalawa. Autopsy materials and surgical materials. So when we say autopsy materials, some of the organs, example, if they want to find the cause of death or the patient died out of a mysterious disease or there is foul play, ganyan, di nila lang po ano, Anong kinamatay, na lason, ano ba, bakit, diba? So, I don't know if you're familiar with the Sarah, the case of the flight attendant who was first, um, 
flight attendant nung una sabi nagang rape ganyan tapos eventually ano pala may aneurysm ganyan so what of si materials yun yung mga yung gusto nila malaman yung cause of death what were the changes in her blood vessels during that time may aneurysm yan so the autopsy materials were bought brought to a histopathology lab yan so class um depending on a histopathology lab if they would receive autopsy materials yan sa NBI pwede yan some hospitals i don't know if they receive autopsy materials depending on their protocol pero so far i haven't encountered a laboratory who is examining autopsy materials yan So, yun. So, right now, what we're going to focus on are the surgical materials. Um, organs, biopsy, which are coming from a living person. So, autopsy materials, materials or organs, samples that are coming from a dead person, patay na. Ayan. So, just, they would just want to find the cause of death or something. So, sur surgery, doon tayo mag-focus. Sa buhay tayo, ah, sa buhay. And surgery materials. Otherwise, referred as surgical or biopsy material. So when we say biopsy, it's a section of a por or a portion of a tumor, a tissue mass, a cell to provide diagnosis. Yeah. So the first one are your FNAB, fine needle aspiration, fine needle aspiration biopsy. Yan, FNAB, FNAB nga dito. Pero yung iba sabi nila, fine needle aspirate. Yan. So, class here, what you can see is a person, tapos yung neck nila. So, yung neck nila, pinahira ng iodine. So, a doctor is the one who is performing this. And class, they use a needle to aspirate a... Uh, uh, aspirate a portion of the a portion of the goiter it is guided by a ultrasound yan so sa tingin niyo class may anesthesia kaya ito yan what do you think did they use anesthesia for fine needle aspirate so class in fine needle aspirate your main your main material is a Um, hypodermic needle. Tapos you will as they will aspirate a portion of the uh, goiter. So dito class walang anesthesia. Ayan. So na try ko na to. So nung ayon nung yung yung goiter ko siguro dalawang beses at ako nagpaganyan. So they're seeing if there are uh, So, nung inaspirate, nilagay sa slide yung, ano, yung nakuha doon. Tapos, ayun, sa pwendo sa akin ng doktor. So, iba, ibang color daw yung lumalabas doon. Pag red, okay pa. Yan, bloody. Pero pag yung iba daw, black na. Ganyan. So, yan, fine needle aspirate. You don't need the local anesthesia for that. Yan. But it should be guided by an ultrasound. And class, so, pagkapasok niya, di ba? Medyo minumove around, minumove around yung needle so that they could get um, fluid from different areas of the goiter. Yeah. So pag fine needle aspiration, need hypodermic needle ang ginagamit. Meron pa tayong class core needle biopsy. So this is bet, mas malaki siya. Mas malaki siya. And kasi plus pag fine needle aspirate, what you could only get are... Um, fluid a little bit of um cells but in core needle you could get about maximum of half inch of a tissue yan cylindrical tissue kasi yung mga kuha ng tissue sa core needle biopsy kasi medyo malakas siya and we have surgical biopsy wherein we use a scalpel again again doctor si gumagana ito guys ha so these are breasts images So, class, ito ang core needle. So, core needle biopsy ang ginawa dito. So, it is also guided by an ultrasound. So, class, itong core needle biopsy, what do you think? May anesthesia kaya ito wala? Meron. Yan, meron. So, they could get about a cylindrical, yan, cylinder. Makakuha sila ng tissue portion. Yan. So, mas maganda daw ito sa mga breast breast two more. Ayan. Ito, breast, fine needle aspiration. 
So, yan. It is weird on the slide. Multidirectional aspiration. So, kukuha sila from different sides of the cyst. And we have excision. Excision biopsy, incision biopsy, and excision biopsy. Okay. Pag-isapan natin kung anong incision and excision of the tumor. Yan. So, just my choice, my choice. Kung may pagka-fluid yung tumor, yan, the doctor knows best, syempre rin. So, kung may pagka-fluid yung tumor, ano lang, fine needle aspirate. Pero kunyari, kung mukhang may laman, ganyan, uh, core needle biopsy. Yan. So, let's later, let's talk about incision and excision biopsy. Meron tayong shape biopsy class. So, shape, you could shape something of Pwede pala yun. Sabi niya, following local anesthesia, so may anesthesia so itong shave biopsy, the pigmented lesion is scooped out of the razor blade with a razor blade or something that is similar. So class, makikita niyo dito sa image. This is a, ano, a shady looking mole. Masyado siyang malaki. Diba? And class, Kung may matutunan naman kayo dito sa disapas natin, check your moles. Yan, apply nyo. May mga mole ba kayo na hindi bilog? Kakaiba yung shape, masyadong malaki, irregular in size. Yan yung get it checked, class. Melanoma is a very scary cancer. Yan, so shape biopsy. Meron tayong incisional biopsy. So class, incisional biopsy is you only get a portion of the tissue pag incisional biopsy portion lang ito desirable na raw yan you only get a portion of the lesion sample lang ng lesion biopsy lang ng lesion pero class pag excisional biopsy you get the whole lesion so class shape biopsy is a type of excisional biopsy yeah so yeah Ah, this is, they used a anesthesia. Tapos grabe, tanggal yung mole. And that's it. That's your shape biopsy. <laughs> and so yung mole, dadalhin na sa histopathology section. This is excisional biopsy. And so, kung hindi siya nave, gumapit ng scalpel. Ayan, excisional biopsy. So, they get the whole portion of the lesion. So, incisional biopsy, ano lang, portion lang ng lesion. Dito, buong lesion. Yan ang galing. So, class, so, the doctor want to, ano, start uh, grossing or dissecting the mole. Yeah. So, they, 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 the doctor will divide it into this kind of sections. Parang bread loaf, di ba? Or bread loafing technique. They're trying to dissect the whole lesion. Masyadong malaki kasi. If you want to completely observe a, a tumor or a mass or a lesion, kailangan mong hatingin. And one technique is bread loafing. Yan, parang bread loaf yung pagkahati. Yan, ganyan o. Plus, tinatawa na yung mga nangal nyo. Yan. Meron tayong punch biopsy class. So, they get a cylindrical portion of the of a uh, of the skin cylindrical mamaya so mas manipis dito mas lalong mas lalong manipis ang punch biopsy yung pagplan na natin yan ito glass may local anesthesia rin to so this punch yan so cylindrical portion of the tissue yan and did that that portion they bring it to the histopathology section. Yeah, diba? And class, we have a lymph node biopsy. So, we get a portion of lymph nodes. So, example class in breast cancer. In breast cancer. So, the patient already has breast cancer. And they want to check class if this, the cancer is spreading. In class, one of the ways a tumor or a cancer is spreading is through the lymph node. Yeah. So, class, kung ito yung breast, Yan. They will find a sentinel lymph node. They will find a lymph node that is closest from the 
tumor or the cancer. Yan. Sentinel. I think narinig nyo na ito yung word na sentinel eh. Pag naglalaro ka ng Dota or yung games. Parang sentinel is the tower or the watch guard of the area. Sa Valorant, parang ginugol ko yung word na sentinel. Valorant, may lumabas. So, may sentinel, mga guard, mga fortress. Ganon. So, di ba, pag bumagsak na yung sentinel, the sentinel has fallen. Something like that. So, yung meron tayong sentinel lymph node. Class, this lymph node is the one that is closest to the um, breast area or the malignant area. May cancer. So, class, lymph nodes are the areas where where your um, fluid is drained. So, class, this could be the site where your cancer can spread. So, class, back then daw, kung may cancer ang isang tao, breast cancer ang isang babae, kailangan, tinatanggal na nila yung 12 na lymph nodes na malapit dun sa breast area. Tinatanggal na agad nila yung 12. Basta may cancer, kaya tanggal na yung 12. However, class, removing all the lymph nodes, many Several lymph nodes from the person is compromising their immune system. Class lymph nodes are very important for your immunity. So, hindi lang sila drainage. So, tambayan sila ng T-cells. So, class, if you remove the lymph nodes, several lymph nodes, sabi nga 12, class, you are compromising the immunity of the patient. So, what they did now is we have a sentinel lymph node biopsy wherein the doctor will inject a radioactive substance or a dye. Yeah. So, they will inject it. In class, if there is a lymph node which lights up, so they would get a radioactivity detector. Ang nabasa ko, Geiger counter or Geiger counter. And G-E-I, G-E-R, counter. So they will check alin ang mga lymph nodes ang nag-light up or nag, um, na, nag-light up or nag-respond dun sa counter in class. So, ang nag-respond. So, class, if the sentinel lymph node is negative for the radioactive substance, negative, hindi nag-light up, walang cancer cell, class, hindi nila tatanggalin yung lymph node. They will not remove the 12 lymph nodes. But class, if the sentinel lymph node, yung pinakamalapit sa cancer, yun yung nag-light up siya, so positive siya for cancer, tatanggalin ng ibang lymph node. Ibig sabihin, kumakalat yung cancer. Yan. Mas, mas mabuti na hindi kumalat yung cancer. So, kung negative yung sentinel lymph node, hindi tatanggalin. Ibig sabihin, hindi kumakalat yung cancer. Yan. Nag-gets ba? So, class, hindi nag-gets, pakireplay. <laughs> Another source of uh, specimen are your um, endoscopy. So, in your endoscope, so there is a scope that enters through the <coughs> digestive tract. And to, sa digestive tract nyo, pwede dito sa nose, ang simula, or sa anal area. And class, one of the common specimen that they could get in your endoscopy are your polyps. and polyps. So, this polyps class, ito rin is sa madalas na mare-receive natin sa histopathology section. Yan. Galing sa mga um, doctors natin that are focusing on the digestive system. So, itong mga polyps na to class, binabantayin itong mga to because um, abnormal polyps could result to colorectal cancer. Di ba matindi rin ang colorectal cancer? Or yun, pag nakakita silang polyp, ganyan, ito tinatanggal nila, oh, parang ganyan. Parang nilalaso. Laso nila. Tinatanggal nila yung polyps. At class, alam nyo, ang, may mal... The polyps varies in sizes. May sobrang liliit class na seriously para silang kulangot. Yan, marang kulangot. Ang darating sa laboratory, sabihin natin tatlong pirasong polyps. Kanya. And class, you have to be careful when you are handling polyps. Yan. When we handle polyps, kunyari three pieces, we wrap it under filter paper para hindi mawala. Kung masyadong maliit class, nilalagay natin sila, binabalat natin ng filter paper. Alam nyo class, pwede nyo, kung masyadong malapit yung, yung mukha niya, pwede yung masinghot yung polyps. In class, endoscopy is a very expensive um, 
procedure, it's about 10,000 pesos. So, libre siya kung may feel health ka. Kung wala kang feel health, that's 10,000 pesos. And class, please do not lose this specimen. Yan. Because the this procedure costs are very invasive. They cause the patient pain. And also, it costs them money. So, kung nawala mo tong polyp, class, saan ka kukuha ng polyp? So, please, don't lose your specimen. Yeah. So same thing with your punch biopsy. As you can see in the in the video class, they only got one portion, one biopsy. In class, it's very important for you guys to never lose to take care of your specimen. So class, we have curatage biopsy. Yeah. So minsan may parang hindi naman kayo ano may may maririnig niyo yung mga OB. Yan, sabi niya, oh, ma'am, may DNC specimen. Yan, may DNC specimen or may curatage specimen. Yan. So, pag DNC, narinig niyo na. Yan, sure, galing yan sa OB. Yan. So, class, they perform DNC when there is abortion or miscarriage. Yan, kunwari may spontaneous abortion. Yan, yan. So, class, illegal lang abortion sa Pilipinas. Ha? Pero kunwari kung um yung abortion na spontaneous yung biglang ano na lang nalaglag ganun yung baby ganyan so class kailangan nilinisan yung ano yung um uterine walls kailangan tanggalin yung bahay bata yung placenta so since nga na terminate yung preg pregnancy hindi na tuloy so andun pa yung placenta so ano yun hindi lalabas yung class na only with para lalabas yun is to raspa. Pag narinig na yun, raspa. Or dilation and curatage. So, kumukuha sila ng ganitong material. Yan. So, gugulo ng example tong gunting. Itong part lang na to, class. Yan. Yan. Tapos, siga ganon. Yan. Daraspahin. Kung baga parang, ano, parang sa nyog, class. Parang, great. Yan. Tatanggalin yung placenta, class. It will remove the lesions and here, here in the under the eye. And so tatanggalin nila using this device. And a cure, a curate, a, a ring curate and curate. Tatanggalin nila yung mga nakausle. And dilinisin nila, raraspay nila. So DNC, so curatage biopsy. And I hope na intindihan niyo. Hindi na intindihan niyo. Na intindihan niyo. Google niyo. What is a dilation and curatage? What is curatage? So we use a curate to remove the specimen. Yeah. To, re to remove the unborn baby. Yeah. So I class when I was working in the laboratory, I received dilation and curatage specimen. Yeah. So ano, pera pera so hiwalay hiwalay yung itsura ng curatage. And when I was an intern and so I think paralofetus. Yan, naka, may pinakita yung pathologist namin when she was performing gross anatomy. So, tinitignan niya yung ano, sinensaming specimen. Ayun, may fetus. Yan. At tinabi niya, nilagay niya sa isang vial. Just, um, perhaps gustong kunin ng family or something. So, class, um, we are very mindful on what the family wants to do with the specimen. So, kung gusto nilang ilibing pa yung, ano, yung nakolek sa dilation and curatage, we give them back the specimen. So, once we're finished, we could give them back the specimen. Yan. So, yung fetus class, we don't, we don't perform, we don't turn them into slides, okay? The, only the placenta. So, other sources of specimen. So, and different types of fluid specimen. So, class notice in this image, there are different types of fluid specimen and they have different turbidity. So, class, ang first na ginagawa ng ano, med tech pagka receive ng specimen is we preserve them, we place it in the refrigerator, yan, depende. But what else is we also centrifuge. Yan, because once we centrifuge, that's the one that we process. Yan, yan. Pinaprocess natin yung, um, yung, super, yung ano, precipitate. The sediments um, that settled at the bottom. Ito hindi na kailangang i-centrifuge. 
So, kailangan mo i-decant yung fluid, tapos kunin mo yung sa baba, yun yung pinaprocess natin sa cytology. So, we also turn them into slides, okay? We stain them and turn them into slides. So, how do we get plural fluid? So, example is through thorax and disease. Nako, class, usong-uso to sa ano, sa COVID. So, sometimes their lungs could be, um, could have an effusion, accumulation of fluid and dissects sa inflammation. So, what else? This is a bone marrow aspiration. So, class, yung bone marrow aspiration natin, di ba natutunan sa hematology? Or could you search, class, where is the site where we get, uh, where we usually get the bone marrow aspirate? Yan. Clue, it's in the hip bone. But saan? Anong specific region, anong specific area? So, please search, ano, where do you get your bone marrow aspiration? And other sources of specimen for cytology. So, here. So, CSF, prostatic secretion. So, class, prostatic secretions. We could get it from um, massaging the prostate. Paano, na, paano yun? So, so, class, you have to wear a gloves. Gloves. Tapos, you get your two fingers. Yan, you place, you, you we um, allow the patient to relax. And sabi mo, sir, ipapasok ko na po yung uh, daliri ko. So, if you pass off, tapos you will massage the prostate. Yan. So, yan. Hindi ko makalimutan to kasi may yung isang friend, siya yung na-attachan ng um, when you were an intern, yung kaibigan ko yung tinawag na ikaw mag-perform ng prostatic massage. Yan. So, yan. Kumuha na ako siya ng prostatic secretions. Yan. Endometrial and endocervical smears. So, OBGYN na kumukuha nito and they just bring it in the laboratory. Sputum. Um, depending on the test, depending on the stain that they are requiring. Eh. Kasi sputum, di ba? You could send it in the microbiology kung yun ang nare-require. Smears of urine sediment. So, depending kung yung stain na sa histopathology, edi sa histopathology ipaprocess. What could we learn from the specimen in histopathology class? As you can see, we're talking about tissues, we're talking about organs, we're talking about thoracentesis, endoscopy. Class, the procedures to get the specimens are invasive and expensive. So class, please take care of your specimen. Yeah. Yeah. Treat it as if it's your uh, relative specimen, di ba? Or a specimen ng crush nyo. Alagaan yung maigi class because it took time to get the specimens. It took money to get the specimens. It took um, a professional to get the specimens. So you have to take care of the specimens in the histopathology section. Kasi kung urine class, pwede mo ipaihi ulit eh. Ganyan. But if they gave you a breast organ, kunyari mastectomy, na wala mo yung breast uh, organ in class. So hindi mo makakalitan yun. And class, uh, merong incident when I was an intern that they lost a specimen and they really went to dump, the dump site. Hinanap talaga nila yung specimen sa dump site. Yeah. Matindi. Yeah, matindi ang liability for you pa. Three L is your methods of preparation and examination. We have fresh tissue examination and preserved tissue examination. So simulan natin sa fresh tissue examination. So fresh means no fixative is re required. You could use not only a bright field microscope, but a face contrast. So this could be stained or unstained. We have, uh, we could use supravital and differential dye. But it's unstained. And class, the advantages, observation of physiologic processes. So, so that since hindi mo nalagyan ng fixative, so fresh pa, so you could see the movement, you could see um, what's happening um, inside the tissue or the cell, and my motion, mitosis, phagocytosis. 
pinocytosis, relatively simple and easy to perform. So class, makikita nyo eh, yung preserved tissue. Talaga, yun yung madalas ginagawa nyan sa laboratory class, preserved tissue, at medyo may pagkahaba. Ito ang fresh tissue examination, hindi pa na, my experience class, hindi ko pang pinaperform ito sa histopathology section. Limited use, li liable to develop changes observed after death. So class, since we did not fix it, di ba, sa oras na nagtagal ka ng organ, ayan, sa isang living person, class, um, putrefaction and autolysis, ang pagkaagnas, pagkasira ng mga cells, pagkarelease ng mga enzyme class, tends to happen. Ayan. So when you're doing fresh tissue examination, you have to be quick. Kasi nga, naagnas or nagre-release na ng mga enzyme ng mga fluid yung katawan ay yung organ. Nagbe-breakdown na yung mga cells. So it's disintegrating. So you have to work fast. So let's start with teasing. So teasing and dissociation, so dissection or separation of tissue components. Tease. Tease, where are you? Yan, hindi yuwalay yuwalay. So teasing, so since a, since a, so they will cut it in smaller pieces and they will separate the portions or components of the tissues until, ito, parang ganito, until it's, thin enough that it could fit in the slide. It, it could be seen under the microscope. Yan. Anatomic relationship is destroyed since you pinagpira-pira sa mga etins. So using, kunya, using sharp, um, sharp needles, needles or parang wire, ganun, yan, ihihiwalay hulay. Yan. Example is in muscles, smooth muscle, ganyan, pinaghiwalay-hiwalay. So, it could be stained or unstained. So, they are using isotonic solution. Sa module nyo class, Ringers or NSS solution, and they will focus it under the microscope. Yun. So, bliss lang. Next, squash or crushing. So, you sandwich the tissue between two slides. Yan. And you sandwich the you sandwich the tissue in between two slides. Yeah. And you can rush nila between two slides. So, between two slides, yung pagitan nila dapat sobrang um, makadikit, at least one millimeter. And you stain it through capillary. So, once you crush it, yan, wag mo nang paghiwalayan. And yung stain, ipapasok mo na lang through capillary action. So, what else, class? We have smear preparation. We have teasing. We have crushing. We have smear preparation. We have streaking. So, we use a diagonal or a zigzag motion to spread the, the sample. Spreading rent. So spreading, so pakibasin lang sa modular class. Usually specimens which, which are viscous, like um, viscous like your sputum, we, we use spreading. Um, what else? Yung mga vagina cervic, cervical smear. Yan, pwede mong spread. We also have pull apart. So we use two slides. You stick it together, then pull it apart. So this pull apart, I did this in our in the collection of bone marrow. Ganyan. So I tried making a normal smear sa bone marrow, parang sa blood smear. Pero depends on the bone marrow of the person. Ganyan. Hindi na work. Ganyan. Pull apart ginawa ko sa bone marrow samples. And we have touch preparation. So touch preparation, so we allow a, a side of the sample to touch one um one side of the slide yeah parang kumbaga is a stamp mo yeah stamp is a stamp mo yung specimen sa slide something like that you would touch one side of the sample 
you will stamp it onto the slide. So we have also frozen section. So plus this frozen section is one of the stat tests in the histopath. So frozen section is performed if you want to have a rapid diagnosis of a tissue. Example is so nasa surgical table yung pasyente and apparently so appendix lang yung ano yung problema ng pasyente but class if it's a woman or, or a lady we have to be very careful with ruptured appendix because it could affect and infect our um, ovaries and fallopian tube so every time pag may ruptured appendix ang isang babae kailangan tumawag ng OBGYN to check if the the ovary is affected or the fallopian tube is affected. So something like that. So kunyari example eh eh gusto hindi nila ma-assess kung anong kung okay lang ba yung ovary or fallopian tube. Perhaps they would need a frozen section. Yan, kailangan na ng frozen section to see if they would remove the ov ovaries or not. So, girl class, girl, may cases na hindi sure yung surgeon kung tatanggalin niya o hindi. Kung, kung benign ba or malignant. So, one way para to ensure na tama yung decision niya is mag-order siya ng frozen section sa laboratory. Wherein, the doctor, kunyari, kunyari colon cancer, is the doctor will assess how much of the colon will they remove so, pwede siyang kumuha ng portion ng colon and tapos dadalhin sa laboratory. Tapos gagawan ng frozen section. Yan, kung malignant ba or hindi. So, class, the result in the frozen section could be um, helpful in, in whether the surgeon should continue the surgery or not or to remove the organ or not. Kasi after an hour or after 30 minutes, pwede tapos na tong frozen section. So, itatawag ni laboratory sabi niya, uh, doctor, uh, negative for malignancy. Yeah. So, rapid pathologic diagnosis ang madalas yeah, na ginagamitin ng frozen section. What else? En enzyme histochemistry. If you want to uh, if you want to use um, if you want to assess the enzymatic characteristics, the demonstration of soluble substances. We have immunofluorescent, immunocytochemical stain, and specialized stain. Again, so two methods of preparing frozen sections. So mabilis to. So frozen class, kailangan sobrang lamig. Sobrang lamig ng procedure. The tissue is hardened. Again, so it's as cold as negative 25 degrees. Yan. Pero sa notes, negative 18 to negative 20 degrees Celsius, ganun kalamig ang pagpaprocess nito. Yan. So first is cold knife procedure. So the, the knife is, you make it cold through carbon dioxide. Pinapalamig. Yung knife is out is about at negative 40 to negative 60 degrees Celsius. Yung panghati mo ng tissue, yung tissue mo is 5 to negative 10 degrees Celsius and environment is 0 to negative 10 degrees Celsius. So, ipapatigasin mo yung tissue ng about 5 to 10 degrees Celsius at malamig rin yung knife so that you could slice it thinly and place it in a slide and stain it. And also, we have cryostat procedure. So, cryostat is a cabinet that houses a cold cabinet or refrigerated cabinet which houses your microtome. So, microtome is used to, you, to cut your tissues into sections. At sobrang lamig. So, yung microtome na sa loob ng cabinet, ito yung pathologist or medtech kumago ang nagsaslice eh, guys. So, methods to freeze your tissue liquid nitrogen, isopentane, cooled by liquid nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and aerosol spray. So two is to perform frozen section. We have cold knife and cryostat procedure. Yan. So it in cryostat class. Yan. So nasa loob yung microtome yung panghate. May video tayo dito.
Yan. So, this is a portion of the tumor. Yan. So, they place an, uh, a gel. Yung OCT, optic milk cutting temperature, parang gel class, para tumigas at media, media nung ano, nung media nung tumor or nung section. Yan. So, ilalagay nila sa isang mold. And they would place more media. Yan. So, nilagay sa loob ng, dyan sa tissue shelf. Lalagyan pa ng more media para maging block. Para makapal. Para maging flat. Or para mas numipis. Dinaganan. And then they're waiting for a few minutes until it's hardened. And now you're ready to slice it under the microtome. Yan. So class, skill yan, skill yan. Ang paggagamit ng microtome, sana yan yung skill na matututunan nyo. That you, you will cut yung block. Yan. So kinakat niya into slices as thin as 5 micrometer para malagay sa slide. Yan. So, ito, medyo magulo pa niya. Yung tissue section niya, yung tinanggal niya. Kasi pauna pa lang eh. So, basically, ang tinanggal niya yung ano, media. Yan. Now, she's ready to cut. Yan. And just once she cut a tissue na maayos ang pagkakagawa, you expect it to, to turn into sections or ribbon. Yan. So, pwede pang mas mahaba yan. Pero, yun na yun. yun Dilikit niya na sa slide. Tapos, i-fix niya na ng methanol. Tapos, i-sustain niya na. O, class manual, di ba? So, that's how you do your frozen section. Bilis niya na. Kala ko. So, overview on... So, sobrang na shortcut na yun, class. So, overview on tissue processing. So, the initial steps in tissue processing... In both uh, fresh and preserved specimen is specimen accessioning and identification. Plus, of course, you have to make sure that you receive the correct, uh, the correct organ. It's well labeled. Ganyan. It is um, kung saang room, all the details that you need. Specimen accessioning, you're placing the correct number on the patient patient sample, yeah. and gross examination and sampling. So, class, yung gross examination, ang gumagawa nun is the anatomic pathologist. Yeah. So, in gross examination in class, the pathologist is getting the size, is getting the the characteristics of the the description of your your organ yan kung anong size anong width actually nga na try ko nang mag-access sa gross examination so para silang mga they describe talaga nila class what the organ looks like and what are the changes they observe the color Yan. Sabi nila, they, they remove the cystic duct. So, the cystic duct will be placed on a cassette. Yan. So, so, what the pathologists do is describing, examining. So, that's gross examination. Ano yung nakikita niya? Then, i-describe niya. So, this is a gallbladder. So, ina-observe niya kung ilang stones how many are the stones? They're, she's measuring the sections. Yan. So, isa sa kukuha siya ng portion ng gallbladder wall. Yan, lalagay niya. So, pinagsama niya yung duct. 
note, tsaka yung wall sa cassette. So, yung lagay niya dito sa cassette class, yun yung uh, ititisyo process natin. Yan, yung mga portions na yan. 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 So, from a big organ, kumuha siya ng mga portions of tissues doon. At yun yung, yung i-receive ng mga histo technologists. Yan. So, class, to process the big tumors, big organs, So, class, minsan makakareceive ka ng malaking breast, ganyan. So, so that to, to manage the organ, masyadong malaki, yan, nagkakat sila in, ng, ng section nila, bread loafing ang tawag sa dissect nila. So, class, ito ang overview. This is the overview of your tissue processing. We have, uh, we have your fixation, first part. You fix it, you preserve it, and we have dehydration, where in class you expose the tissue in increasing concentration of alcohol. Dehydration, you are removing the water and the fixative. Next is the clearing. Yeah, clearing. So clearing is you remove the alcohol and you are preparing for infiltration. Yeah. And you make the tissue more transparent. Yan. Tapos next is infiltrate and embedding. So class, infiltrate. So class, ang mga tissue may mga butas-butas siya. So para ma-fill up yung butas, class, we fill it with paraffin. We infiltrate it, we impregnate it with paraffin. Wa paraffin wax, class. Yung sa kandila, yes. Tapos we embed it. So, we place it in a specific orientation arrangement para, para, para madaling ikat. We are preparing for it to become a block. Yan. Ito yung end product, ah, maging block siya so that we could section it. So, ganun class. So, fixation, dehydration, clearing, infiltration, or impregnation, embedding, until it will become a block so that we could section it and mount it. Okay, so number one is the fixation. Yes, so this is one of the most important and critical part of tissue processing. So number one of tissue processing. Ha? So mahalaga yung accession and labeling gross examination. Pero yung sa work ng histotechnologies, ito yung number one. So we fix it. Actually, once the specimen comes into the laboratory, we need to fix it. Because sometimes you could not process it immediately. Dapat sabay sabay. So yun, it's for preserving and hardening of surgical samples. Maraming uh, ite, kailangang take in mind with, when it comes to fixation. Yun yung pag-aaralan natin next week, ang fixation. Next next week, dehydration. Next next week, clearing. Yan. So pag-aaralan natin class lahat ng mga reagents involved under fixation. Pag-aaral natin advantages ng specific ng reagent na yun, disadvantage, what is really the rationale behind fixation. So ngayon, overview lang. So class fixation is we're trying to preserve the integrity of the tissue or the cell because isn't it that I told you a while ago that upon removal of the tissue or the specimen from the body, there is already autolysis and putrefaction. So we need to put a stop on that and it's for fixation. So, marami rin pang functions ang mga fixative, fixing agents, fixative, at ang pinakakomon ay 40% formaldehyde. Yan, 40% formaldehyde. Yan ang pinakakomon. So, we preserve it about 4 hours to 6 hours kung hindi nagmamadali. Yan. So, kung nagmamadali, yun yung mga minimum. Depende sa protocol ng laboratory. Next, guys, we have dehydration or dealcoholization. Oh, sorry. Itong dealcoholization sa clearing to, ha? Mali. Itong dealcoholization sa clearing. Dehydration is we remove the water. Yan. Dealcoholization is in clearing, ha? We remove the alcohol. So, dehydration is the removal of water and the fixative from the tissue. So class, 
Um, if you remove the tissue and the alcohol, actually the tissue will, uh, the water, the tissue will shrink. And to prevent that from happening, um, we slowly, we slowly, um, we slowly subject the tissues in increasing strength. So depending on the tissue, yan. So nagsisimula tayo sa mababang percentage ng alcohol pa, tapos mataas. So that the tissue will not be distorted or it will not shrink. So as to remove the, we are removing the water slowly and carefully. So class, tissue processing takes time. Next is clearing. So clearing is the alcoholization. Don't forget it. So this is the time wherein we remove the alcohol. Yeah. So once you remove the water, now you remove what you use yeah, and you remove the alcohol. Yeah, and so other than that is it also makes the tissue sample transparent and clear. So we are preparing it for staining. We are making it transparent and clear. And so the purpose of the clearing agent, so the common clearing agent that we use is silene. So class, notice formaldehyde alcohol, silene, plus what we are using are organic or polar substances. And class, these are flammable substances. So you have to be careful in histopathology. And they must, so the clear agent must remove the dehydrating agent and must be miscible to the impregnating agent or infiltrating agent, which is paraffin. So class, pag natanggal mo na yung tubig, nanangal mo na yung alcohol, now, we fill, we fill it. We fill the holes. So, may butas, class, may butas yung mga tissues natin, yung mga cells natin. At ang pang, para hindi mag-collapse yung tissue, hindi mag-collapse yung cell, class, kailangan niya ng, ano, ng structural integrity. Para magkaroon ng structural integrity, class, inalagyan natin ng paraffin. Yan. So, now, after exposing your tissue to silin, so first you expose it to 40% formaldehyde, you expose it to increasing concentration of alcohol next to silin, next to paraffin wax. The paraffin wax um, sweet spot of melting point is 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. Yan. So yun, ibababad mo sa paraffin to fill the spaces, the cavities, and interstices yung mga butas. Yan. So, para magka-structure yung tissue mo, hindi mag-ulap. <coughs> now, guys, so after infiltrating, yan, we get a mold. Kumukha tayo ng mold. Example, yung mga ginagamit sa pretinus, paper boat, pwede parang, yung parang kunyari, ice mold, parang ganun class. So, we place, we orient, we get molds, and we orient, inaayos natin yung, yung, yung arrangement ng tissue, ng ano, what was required of us so that it could be, we are preparing it to be section. So, ito na yung tissue block class. Now, ito na yung ipapasok mo dito para ready to cut yan, or section. So, class, in sectioning, in sectioning, natanggal na. In sectioning class, so we slice it, we make ribbons for the as thin as five micrometers. And sorry. As thin as five micrometers. Yan, sina slice natin. Yan, this is a rotary microtome. So, microtome is an equipment that is only found in the histopathology. So, ayun yung ano, ayun yung, ayun yung block. Yan, is a slice. Parang sa, sa cryostat. So, ang haba, no? Doon sa cryostat, pinatigas lang, i-slice na. Pero dito, class, tissue processing, medyo matagal siya. Yan. Hindi madalas ginagamit yung cryostat, class, kasi mahal yung mga, yung mga materials. At kailangan talaga skilled yung gumagawa nun. Next is once you section it, you place it in a, a slide, then you are now ready to stain it. 
Yan. So the stain will depend on the component of the tissue. Yan. So kung yung tissue eh ano maraming taba so we use sudan black yung mga yung mga dyes na for lipids and we mount it and label it so we cover it with a slide and we use a mounting media mounting media not mounting media mounting mounting media so we have two types of mounting media we have aqueous media and resinous media and aqueous water-based media. So, ito yung mga stain. So, ito yung stain sa Papa Nicolau stain class or Pop smear. So, so, class, ayun, yung overview natin. Kulang yung image ko. Yeah. So, balikan natin. Yeah. So, fixing and dehydration. When you expose it in silin, the most common clearing agent Yan, sa clearing and infiltration. So, about three changes yung andito eh. Depending class ha. Pero dito, una, one hour sa isang liquid paraffin. One hour, another hour sa bagong liquid paraffin. At two hours sa liquid paraffin. And after that is you will place it in a mold until it will become a rectangular. And this paraffin block is ready to be um, sectioned. Yan, wala kang final product. Yan. So, your goal is to make a slide out of it. A stain slide. Yan. So, class advances in histopathology and cytotechnology. So, class, there are different stains now that are used in histopathology. So, gumagamit tayo ng stains that immune, immunologic substances are, are embedded into it. Ibig sabihin, may reaction ng antigen and antibody. Yan, digital pathology, wherein they're taking picture of slides. Yan. So, in they making soft copies of the tissue slides. So, instead na yung physical na slide yung meron ka, store na nila into, a, into an information system para isa-search na lang nila, hindi yung may physical ka na slide. So, this is digital pathology. So, isa na upcoming... Um, upcoming science. So, kailangan talaga nila ng maraming histo technology para ma-manage nila yung mga slides nila. Yan, na mas madali. At least computer, computer nila. Molecular pathology. So, kung immunohistochemistry, kailangan ng antigen-antibody reaction, molecular pathology is um, you are checking the disease in the DNA and RNA level. Yan. And tissue biomarkers. Yan. So, hope opportunity in histopathology class, sobrang rami. So, sa Pilipinas, pwede kang maging histopathologist. Pwede kang maging cytoscreener. Ikaw yung napaprocess, nagbabasa ng mga pap smears. So, sa mga yun. You could work in hospital, clinical labs, medical school research labs, or research labs class, or medical school research lab. Kasi pwede ikaw yung gumawa ng mga slides para sa med students. University, basic science labs, U.S. federal labs, pwede kang mag-abroad class, and veterinary surgical labs. So, what's good about histopathology is you could process the tissue of animals. Yan. So, we have cytoscreeners, we have ito mga exam, we have histotechnologies, ASCP, so American Society of Clinical Pathologists, tama ba ako? ASCP or college clinical patol ASCP. So, pwede kayong mag-class if you have two years experience sa histopathology. Pwede, sa, pag kayo nasa Pilipinas at the moment, ah, or three years. Pwede kayong mag-take ng mga exam licenses na to at, at pwede kayong mag-apply as histotechnologist and histotechnologist um, nakalimutan ko yung HTL. Yan. I will follow it at sa Google Meet natin. Pero yun, yun, pwede kami mag class through histopathology. At maganda to class because this is a very specialized section. Pwede kang sobrang gumaling in this, um, in this field. And class, thank you for listening. I hope you learned something. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.